Welcome to the INSS podcast. I'm Ophir Winter, senior researcher at the INSS. In today's episode, we will explore the perspective of the United Arab Emirates regarding the October 7th massacre and the subsequent Israel-Hamas war. I'm delighted to introduce our guest, Saud Saker, an engineer and public diplomacy strategist from Abu Dhabi. Saud is a prominent peace activist who has been deeply engaged in the Abraham Accords since its inception. He has visited Israel and actively interacts with Israeli society and youth. Furthermore, he provides consulting services to the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs and various Israeli NGOs. Thank you, Saud, for joining us. Thank you so much, uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Rafer. Um, I'm honored to be hosted here tonight. And um, I know all of you uh, are actually busy having um, having such a hectic time and making making the time to deliver such an important messages on those difficult time is just a noble work to do. Thank you for having me uh, on this podcast. It's highly appreciated. So uh, before we dive into the current uh, situation, uh, could you please share a bit about yourself? What does it mean to be a peace activist in the UAE? And uh, what initiatives have you been engaged in since the signing of the Abraham Accords uh, three years ago, or, um, a little bit more than three years ago? Definitely, yes, for sure. Um, to start with, um, I'm from Abu Dhabi, as you said. Um, I'm an aerospace mechanical engineer by profession and education as well. Um, the Abrahamic Accord had had a huge impact on me. I was invited to Israel on um, on 2021 on 2021 to visit the country. I was invited by the Israeli Ministry of Strategic Affairs as a youth leader to come and see the country and see the possibility of different collaborations and different plans to have between the youth in Israel and the youth in the UAE as well. Um, I would say Israel is a beautiful country. I've been from south to north, east to west, from Yerucham to Nazareth, from Tel Aviv to, to Jerusalem. Uh, my experience was very pleasant visiting Israel. They were very welcoming to us, uh, people who signed the, the Abrahamic Accord. And overall, my, my, my experience was actually amazing. Coming back from Israel, uh, my perspective, I would say, uh, changed a lot because I saw that it's very important for the dialogue to happen. It's not something that it should be delayed. It's very important for us to get closer to each other. I would say that we are cousins who have been distanced for 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 decades. So coming back from um, from Israel, I involved in different projects. I consulted for the Israeli Foreign Affairs. Um, I was also supporting the Israeli Pavilion in Expo Dubai 2020. Um, I was supporting different NGOs on various capacities. I've also been part of different conferences, uh, including the regionalism conference that was held here in Abu Dhabi between the Tel Aviv uh, University and different entities here in the Emirates as well. Um, I'm trying to to not just build the bridges, answering your question, what does it mean to be an, uh, an activist, is to actually build bridges and to actually connect with people to, uh, to understand what our differences is, but not only that, only, uh, but not only that, but also to strengthen the bridges that we already have. Uh, I would say the languages, the food, um, the terrain, and also to create different business opportunities that is actually possible uh, that was actually not possible to establish before the Abrahamic Accords as well. Yes, it sounds uh, fascinating and so important. And I would like to speak with you um, on this context uh, about uh, the Hamas uh, horrific October 7th uh, massacre. As we find ourselves over 50 days into this uh, conflict, uh, I would like to ask you how this uh, war affected uh, your ability and the general ability to continue advancing peace in our uh, region and what has been its uh, implications uh, for you personally and for uh, the UAE-Israel relations in general? 
thank you for uh, for asking this important question. Uh, first of all, I would answer from my perspective, from my own capacity. I would uh, I wouldn't be uh, rep representing a general view. I would say, but as an expert on this on the on this matter, I'm going to share my view. Um, first of all, uh, me and the UAE, they have condemned the uh, the operation that Hamas did on the seventh of October, the genocide, the um, the barbaric event that happened on that day, we condemn it on 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 all the levels. To me, this is uh, this is this is a genocide and a catastrophe not only for the Israelis but for for the globe as a whole, for humanity as well. Because uh, it has been all over the internet the horrific pictures, and um, it had really affected me personally on on uh, on a very emotional level. Um, Hamas is a terrorist organization that has been registered here in the UAE, in the States, and almost everywhere in the world. Uh, we do not support it, not even one bit. We do not support terrorism. Terrorism have no religion at all. Me personally, I believe that they do not represent the Arab or the Islam religion by any way, means, or shape at all. Um, I would say at the beginning of the war, the emotions were very high. So um, definitely me, myself, I kept my connection with my friends as well to see how, how is the situation developing. And because the media, and I will say also the fake media, including um, different channels that have been, um, I would say, sharing um, the footage, they, they, they do not always give you the correct view of the current situation. They would only show you what they want to see according to their agenda. So I was also with a close connection to my friends in Israel to understand the situation from both sides. And um, and the emotions, I would I will tell you honestly, the emotions were very high on the first week, at least two weeks, actually. The emotions were very high because there had been, I would say, horrific ca uh, casualties from both sides. So we tried to keep the the uh, the dialogue going to see what, what, what can we do about the situation. Uh, the UAE have done a lot uh, for the Palestinians from that perspective. I would say they have uh, they, they have started um, the gallant night operation, which is which is to help the people of Gaza when it comes to medical aid, also when it comes to food, when it comes to different way to to help them, and they made sure it get to the right people. Uh, we've also here in the UAE established um, a donation. Uh, I would say like um, a donation by the name of uh, Taraham to also help uh, the people. We understand and we condemn what happened on the 7th of October 100%, but we also care for the, I would say, um, uh, for, the, for the poor people who have been affected by this event on both sides as well. Um, 50 days now, as you said, uh, during the war, the, uh, I would say with the releases, of hostages, and I'm so glad about that. With the release of some of the hostages, the emotions have come down a little bit. Um, we have, uh, I, I would say, the the dialogue have improved a lot. And uh, when it comes to when it comes to business, people to people, now people can actually start talking about. Okay, so what would be this, the 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 situation now? Um, I believe that, in my own perspective, Hamas should be out of the picture at all. Uh, Hamas should not be uh, leading any talk or, or or dialogue in Gaza in that context because of uh, what they did. I believe they lost the faith uh, of the people, um, especially in this region, but also all over the world as well. Even though their relations with the UAE are uh, relatively new, uh, I hear your uh, very clear uh, condemnation, and of, of course of your country, uh, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the UAE, and I would like to ask you, how do you explain uh, the resilience of the Abraham Accords even uh, during these challenging times? Um, all right, I would answer this, this question. It's an excellent question. I would say that the Abrahamic Accord was built to last. Um, the, the Abrahamic Accord uh, was built between, between two nations. It has, of course, a lot of goals. But it was it was built between two nations to actually grow and to actually have more, I would say, peaceful, tolerant, and stable Middle East. And this is the uh, bigger picture to it. Of course, many events such as many horrific events such as the um, the attack on the October seventh had uh, 
had I would say like had an impact not only in the region but in the world as well, like east and west as well. But when it comes to the uh, to the Abrahamic Accord, I would say um, it was built to last. Um, of course, of course, there would be, as you mentioned, some delays, some um, some dialogues would be would be actually delayed because because of the high emotions and because people need to explain why did this happen who did that and uh what's the future solution for this so um but the most important thing that the abrahamic accord gave is actually the dialogue itself i believe this is what's what's really important if what's happened something that we cannot speak about to each other then there will be no solution actually to it but the abrahamic accord gave the the platform to actually speak about it and to actually find the solutions well for for both sides for sure yes uh, i think that the abraham accords uh, reshaped our region and of course the uae played a pioneering uh, role in this uh, process on the opposite side aside uh, hamas and its uh, regional supporters such as uh, iran have a different and even uh, contradictory agenda for the future of uh, the Middle East of our, our region. And I would like to uh, take your perspective and your understanding of the gap between these two uh, regional approaches of the UAE and uh, of Israel from one side and uh, Hamas and Iran and other uh, uh, radical players from the other side. I would say uh, different, different, I wouldn't say different nations, but, but I would say different Iran proxies. Uh, whether whether they are like the Houthis in Yemen, whether they are uh, uh, Hamas in Gaza, whether they are uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, all of them, they have a very radical, um, I wouldn't even call it a radical Islam because they, it's, it, it's like more like extreme. So I will have, uh, they, they have a, uh, I would say, a terrorist approach because all of them are considered a terrorist or organizations and uh, they are destroying, they are not building. This is this is this is how I can put it in one quote, uh, one context. Their agenda is actually to destroy the uh, the Middle East. For them, they gain from the non-stability in the region. If the region is non-stable, they actually um, I, I I will say they actually monetize on that. They actually monetize on the instability of the region. And uh, to them, it's very important that there will be always a war. There will be always uh, casualties. They will be always hidden agendas to their approach that's that's i will that's i will speak from from the their side um i will speak from uh the uh, the ue side we look forward for a brighter middle east the ue have always always been uh been the uh been the nation or the country that is leading i would say peace tolerance and stability, not only here in the region, but also all over the world. They are the pioneers of it. And uh, they use all of their power, soft power, in order to spread that message. And uh, for us, uh, I would say a new nation, and we are actually getting to our national day, the uh, uh, the uh, 52nd uh, national day that we are having actually on this uh, 2nd of December. And so for a country uh, which is 52 years old and we're having such a huge impact when it comes to uh, humanity and peace on the world, I'm actually very proud. Uh, I'm actually very proud of it. Yeah. So first of all, uh, congratulations for uh, your uh, Independence Day. And I will continue with the uh, previous question. If we consider these two approaches, the peace camp led by the UAE, and the resistance uh, camp, or whatever we call it, represented by Hamas and maybe other uh, proxies uh, of Iran, like Hezbollah and, uh, and the Houthis. Uh, which of uh, the camps you believe contributes more to the Palestinian people and to the uh, Palestinian cause? I would say 100% the camp which is, which is led by peace, which is led by, uh, I would say, um, you put in like the terrorist organization and and one group and the barbaric organization like on a side and to the other side you put in the you have put in the modern world who's actually looking for peace so of course i will choose the um 
the peace approach for a reason because what did uh, what did Hamas gain from all uh, from all of the operation? Uh, the cost on a the cost on a human life was actually huge, and they and they actually knew it would be like that and uh, and even bigger. Um, few leaders of them they actually came out and they said um, the tunnels would be for. Uh, for our fighters, but whatever happening on the ground, it should be the uh, United Nations and the Israelis' responsibilities. Someone who would sacrifice their people um, in such a manner should not be even called leaders. They should not be even part of the equation that is that is going to to come eventually to solve the uh, to solve the Palestinian issue and the Palestinian cause as well. So, um, one hundred percent choosing the camp. That is that is led by the UE and all of the countries. That is actually um, the state and uh, Israel. All of the countries that, that is actually trying to move the dialogue forward in order to end this war. Um, and it was it was great to to actually hear about the cease of fire that happens um, a few days ago. The UE have been have been talking about it. I would say uh, more and more in the on the Security Council in the past 50 days. They have put a lot of effort for it in order to come, and we are actually so glad to hear that it actually uh, it actually happened. Let's hope that uh, the war indeed will be ended uh, sooner or later. And uh, I would like to ask you, uh, how would uh, you uh, envision the um, post-war scenario in Gaza, uh, how it will look like, and uh, what role could a country like the UAE play in promoting, hopefully, a new and more peaceful reality in the Gaza Strip? The first thing I see uh, for me, if I want to imagine this scenario, is, is to have a decent life for the people of Gaza, for the Palestinians who are living in Gaza, for them to have a decent life where they would have clean water, shelters, uh, job opportunities, uh, food, especially healthcare for the kids as well. Um, I believe I believe it is very important for them to to uh, to have that. Regarding the uh, the strategy of of how to make it, I would say I've already mentioned to you that Hamas for like the most important thing, like Hamas should be out of the equation there because not to have such a horrific event again. That's like for sure, and. Uh, I believe I believe the Palestinian people should have their right to determine them um, their own opinions, their own political views. But it's also at the beginning, of course, many countries would, would, would actually come to help them as well. But I believe that they should be taken lead. They should have they should decide by their own self, not not make uh, I would say not making a terrorist organization decide their fates and their uh, the fate of their kids as well, because we've seen also. Uh, many many videos of of people actually speaking they say we want to decide we want our kids to grow up we want our kids to have the best education the best uh, healthcare that is actually possible when they see that the leader of hamas are living in five stars hotel having the best cars having uh, the lavish life they're having and they are dying and their kids are dying they say no we want uh we want to be part of the uh we want to be, uh, I would say, we uh, we want to be people who, who are actually who are actually living a, a decent, good life uh, in Gaza. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think that uh, the UAE may play uh, a role as part of a wider uh, coalition to support uh, the establishment of this uh, new and hopefully better reality in Gaza? I would say that the UAE have done not only now, but uh, through all the time, it have been always supporting the Palestinian and the people of Gaza in this. Uh, I would say in this uh, in this event because um, until recently, the UAE have had loaned tons and tons of 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 medical aid to Gaza. Not 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 only that, the UAE have also hosted over a uh, one thousand kids with their families, most of them who have. Um, who have cancer, and uh, because of of Hamas taking hospitals as a base of operation, they 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 could not actually get uh, get the treatment that 
they need there. So the UAE have, have, have actually hosted more than a thousand kids with their families as well in order for them to take the proper medical care here in UAE. Um, uh, and um, speaking about post-war, um, I'm not... I'm not sure how is this scenario is going to play. It's going to be on a very uh, large scale, I, I would say. But one thing, one thing that I can say, the UAE will will always choose uh, tolerance, helping to be a positive um, a positive part in whatever dialogue that is going to happen post uh, war in Gaza. Yeah. yeah, I would like to take your your advice and uh, your. Uh idea on an, on an issue, you know, that uh, the Israeli goal is, uh, as we mentioned before, is the removing of uh, Hamas rule uh, from Gaza following the massacre. And we often hear that uh, it might be possible to beat a political and military force, but uh, ideas cannot be easily eradicated. And if we drew uh, from uh, the UAE experience in combating uh, radical Islam, uh, and I think that you succeeded uh, to counter these uh, ideologies quite good in your country, and I would like to ask for your advice uh, about how to do it, and uh, do you think it's possible at all? 100%, because many people are actually speaking at the moment. They would say Hamas is not only an an organization they would say hamas is an idea but but even but even if they say that they 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 actually make it i would say easier for people to deal with for a main reason the way that we have been dealt with and i will speak this from my experience i'm a guy who have studied in uae governmental school for 12 years um the the first and the most important thing which is a key is education education the kids who 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 grew up learning the meaning of true Islam, the meaning of tolerance, the meaning of peace, will never grow up, most of the cases, 100%, will never grow up to be a terrorist. We have been taught here in the UAE since the grade one, um, the Arabic language, the Islamic religion as a subject itself. It was never mentioned anywhere in it, any topic about, I would say, uh, uh, intolerance or any topic about extremism. It was never mentioned to us. And uh, it makes uh, for me after the war and after the discoveries that the uh, IDF did, uh, they show a book of um, of Hitler, Mein Kampf, uh, like which is which was actually discovered in a kid's room. And this is only showing you how kind of education uh, the Gazan kids are um, are having at that at that time. To me, it only makes sense they would grow up to have such a mentality. So. I would say to start with education. Um, I'm not saying to control the people and to enforce uh, to enforce agendas on them. I'm saying to give them freedom, but to 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 help them to uh, I would say like to, uh, to help them with the education process, especially in schools, to uh, to monitor what kind of education their kids are are, uh, are are having. It should be free education, of course, but it should not be. Uh, I would say an education that would would lead them to become a tourist not only at an older age but like in their uh, teenage life as well. Yes. So if we assess uh, the handling of uh, the war so far, uh, what uh, adjustments uh, do you believe are necessary for a more effective af- approach by both sides? How can uh, Israel, for example, contribute to ensure a more stable region and what uh, lessons do you think that the uh, Palestinians uh, could take to avoid uh, this kind of tragic escalations in uh, the future? Um, I would speak like from both sides. I would say like at the beginning, um, when it comes to the uh, Palestinians, they should definitely uh, follow uh, the, uh, the international dialogue that is happening there and there uh, in Gaza at the moment on where are the, um, I would say, the safe camps to be there, uh, where are uh, where are the location that they won't be any um, any uh, any airstrikes for them to actually, um, I would say, n- n- not try or not, uh, do not give the opportunity for anyone to use you as a human shield. Uh, because uh, 
for their safety, for their kids, they should understand that, that someone is trying to use them to, uh, to push their political agenda. Someone is trying to use them as a human shield. So they should not, uh, they should, first, they should be aware of it. Second, they should not let it happen. So this is, I would say, uh, the things that uh, the Gazan people can do uh, at the moment, because as you know, many of them have, have, get, uh, have, have got a lot of losses. And when it comes to the Israeli side, uh, the massacre on the October 7th was, was actually huge. I know uh, people personally that have lost loved ones there, people who still have, who, who still have their kids kidnapped there uh, as well. So I understand that uh, their loss is actually huge, very huge, actually. Uh, when it comes to them, I've also, uh, I've, been, I've, been, I've been fully, fully updated on the uh, situation, the Israeli army did its best to, um, to uh, I would say like to protect the civilian there. Um, they made the phone calls, uh, they will put the flyers, they would do everything possible uh, to tell the civilians who lives in Gaza to actually leave dangered uh, locations. Uh, their social media have been very active, like step by step, not only speaking to the civilian in Gaza, but also speaking to the world on how the Israeli army is operating at the moment, and I've been uh, I've been very updated uh, when it comes to to that side, to the human uh, to to the hum, uh, uh, I would say the humanitarian side of the uh, of the IDF, and I've also seen also the the horrific side of the uh, airstrike as well. So now we we understand both sides. This is why I would urge the people not only to um, not only to take uh, safe places and listen to the information that is actually uh, getting to them, but also to follow up on the media and see and see what is uh, what is happening at the moment and to and to be updated. Because I would speak in different words in the past. Everything mostly will be uh, will be guided by a certain channel or by a certain uh, a certain media who have a certain agenda. But at the moment with the social media and everyone having a phone. Everyone can show what is actually happening there and then. And uh, uh, the IDF have been very uh, effective doing that, in my opinion. Thank you. And uh, my last question will be, uh, let's say, a rather practical one. You know that uh, since the signing of the Abraham Accords in uh, 2020, approximately one million Israelis have uh, visited uh, the United Arab Emirates. And uh, looking ahead, uh, what sentiments do you expect Israelis uh, will experience when visiting Dubai and Abu Dhabi uh, today, uh, following uh, what happened? Um, I will say nothing changed at all. Um, the UAE is welcoming to every Israeli, to every Jewish person in the world. Um, we have over 200 nationalities here, and uh, we have a strict laws when it comes to anti-Semitism, when it comes to extremism. Uh, this question, I believe, it should be um, it should be directed to the Jewish community living here uh, peacefully in the UAE, where they actually uh, prosper and they actually uh, enjoy their time here. I would say, uh, when it comes to visiting. The UAE, it's, it's a safe haven for everyone who would come to UAE. Um, we, are, uh, we are a welcoming nation by, our, uh, by ourselves. And uh, I believe everyone who would come and visit, they will have the time of their life actually here in the UAE. Whether they go to Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and the rest of the Emirates, of course. So uh, I'm personally looking forward to visiting you. And I would like to thank you once again, Saud, for uh, being with us today. Uh, we eagerly anticipate uh, also for your return to Israel in the near future, hopefully under uh, much more uh, peaceful uh, circumstances. I hope so. I hope so. I hope, um, I hope the war would end very soon and we can, uh, we can, we, we can definitely continue our, uh, our visits from, from both sides, UAE to Israel and Israel to UAE as well. Inshallah, thank you very much. Inshallah, thank you so much, uh, my friend. Thank you.